G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to yet another enthralling and also exciting episode of r slash relationship advice, presented by Marky, and also the owner of Marky Industries, my second channel. If you guys love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and get ready for today's bloody good episode. Let's go. Posted by user LR Hun, titled... Bridezilla ruins her own wedding, demands bridal party pay her cancelled wedding. Starting the year strong, I swear. So, my friend Dana, female 29, was supposed to be getting married this past Sunday on the 14th of January. The wedding got cancelled and things had gotten very crazy. Dana was getting married to Josh, male 32. She's still in college with me and asked a few friends from college, myself included, to be her bridal party. Now, from the start, this wedding has been a disaster. I'm going to just point out a few of the crazy things that we've dealt with. 1. She refused to invite my best friend, who she's supposedly good friends with, because she thinks that we're lesbian lovers. We're not. 2. She had us go to the dress fitting and then demanded each of us pay $2,000 each for our dresses. Apparently she had a specific style she wanted. I can afford it, but I won't buy a $2,000 dress for one event. Some of the girls in the bridal party don't have that flexibility with money. 3. Apparently Josh couldn't invite any single females that were not blood relatives of him, so if he had any female friends, they were axed. 4. One of the girls in the bridal party doesn't drink because of her religion. Dana accused her of being pregnant in front of her parents and almost got her kicked out of her house. She was not pregnant, and she dropped from the bridal party. She was a class act though, and never bad-talked Dana, just said that she couldn't make it. We found out about it pretty much on the day of the wedding. And five, she tried to make us cancel our holidays with our families to instead go with her to a destination bachelorette party. I work full-time even during holidays, so I told her that was not happening. More of the bridesmaids said similar things, and she dropped it. That's just five things of countless drama this wedding was having before the day. Now, the meat of the story comes on the wedding day. The day started horrible. Dana was having a meltdown because apparently the flower girl had to cancel because she has chicken pox. She was threatening to sue the mother unless she brought this sick three-year-old to the wedding. Josh apparently was able to calm her down from this starter outburst, and we began preparations. The whole day, she had constant outbursts. She made people cry, like wedding staff and bridesmaids. The maid of honor deserves a medal for the amount of diplomacy and bullshit control that she had to do. I, for the most part, took the easy route and decided to work outside the bridal suit, like checking flowers, making sure food was okay, basically any excuse not to be around the bride. Eventually, I had my hair and makeup done, and then the bride asked for a little bit of time alone to decompress from the stress. We didn't even fight it. You could not see a group of women run faster away. The wedding was starting in 30 minutes, so we figured that she would be fine alone for that little. I spent those 30 minutes just sitting in the chapel with my phone. It had to be about 5 minutes before the start of the wedding when Maid of Honor came over to tell me the wedding was cancelled. I asked her what happened, and Maid of Honor says, Dana was having a quickie with Josh's uncle in the room. Josh caught them. I just stared at the Maid of Honor with my mouth pretty much about to reach the floor. She told me to run, and that she was trying to get as many people out before things exploded. So I quickly got my purse, gathered the two bridesmaids that were carpooling with me, and we left like the devil was after us. I checked with the other bridesmaid, and all had escaped. That night, I called the maid of honor to check what had happened, and the tea was bad. Apparently, and rightfully, Josh called off the wedding, called her a few times, told off his uncle, and has since left with his mates to, I hope, have the biggest single man party ever. I feel so bad for him. He's an absolute gem of a man. He apparently told Dana and her parents that she will be paying for the cancellation fees, According to the maid of honor, Dana's father told her in front of everyone that she was paying for it on her own for being an SLUT. I thought that was the end of it. I made the choice to separate myself from this mess until I got a call from Dana not even an hour ago, demanding $5,000 to help pay her cancellation fees. 
According to Dana, it was our duty as the bridal party to pay for her cancellation fees. I obviously told her no, and that she might as well lose my number. I am never speaking to this woman again. This has been pretty much the reaction of all the bridesmaids and the maid of honor. By the way, maid of honor? Josh's older sister. In the comments, some more tea, OP says, I mean, the sad part? She had her makeup and hair done, and we left dressed and ready. So yeah, she was wearing her wedding dress for this. You should have stayed to get more info. OP says, as much as I like tea, I know when it's best to retreat and get it from a witness. I'm pretty sure if I stayed, Dana would have dragged us into something. Was Dana always like this? Oh, we're sure there's no moral compass in there. She used to be incredibly nice way back before her engagement, and since becoming the first bride of the group, she's become insufferable. We were all on our last thread. How long was she having a thing with the uncle? OP says, how long with the uncle? No idea. I found out during the wedding and don't have any info on it since. Poor Josh, I hope he finds someone. I'm not gonna lie, pretty sure half the bridal party would offer themselves as tribute. He's a good looking guy. I don't know him that well, but we've had drinks a few times. He'll find a girl when he's ready in a snap. What happened to the $2,000 dresses and what were they? OP says, nobody bought the dresses. Some of the girls can't afford it. She had a full meltdown in the chat until Maid of Honor got involved and offered to buy cheaper dresses for the bridesmaids. Ellie Saab, dress was beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't buy it for a wedding. How did that one bridesmaid's parents think that she was pregnant when she doesn't drink for her culture? OP says, well, my understanding, bear in mind, I'm sharing as I was told, is that Dana and this bridesmaid are really old friends, so the bridesmaid's parents have a level of trust with Dana. Apparently, bridesmaid had been feeling sick a few days prior, and I remember she had to cancel something. Then we went to prepare the bachelorette party, and there was going to be an extra charge for mocktails, which she offered to pay. Dana found out somehow, and spoke first to her parents, telling them that the bridesmaid was acting like she was pregnant, not mentioning that the whole issue was because the bridesmaid refused to make an exception for the bachelorette party about drinking. Obviously still kinda bad on the parents, but I can see where they're coming from. Bridesmaid is not pregnant for the record. She was actually just sick. Also, in case someone asks, Bridesmaid no longer lives with her parents and hasn't for a few years. Bridesmaid was then contacted by her parents and told never to come back to their home for being an W-H-O-R-E that got pregnant outside marriage. I know she lives in dorms, so I imagine she's going back during vacations. It's still the family home and she keeps a room there. Someone says, this is fake because there are no cancellation fees the day of the wedding. And OP says, oh, pardon me for not knowing how wedding planning works when I've never worked or cared for planning a wedding, because, you know, must be common knowledge for everyone everywhere. I translated what I was told. What I was told by the bride is, necesito el dinero para pagar la boda. (laughs) I can't read Spanish. (laughs) I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm in narcos, so I'm going to channel my inner, my inner narco. El hijo de puta cancelo y me están cobrando. Feel free to figure out the translation in English. I don't even know what to say about this one. That was, that was just a shit show. But for me being a sticky beak, if I were to put myself in this situation, I'd kind of want to just be a fly on the wall. I don't know if I'd leave. I'd, I'd watch from a distance. And if I were targeted, I'd start walking away. But I, like, really wanted to see the chaos unfold in person. I want to know what that was like, because how do you get caught banging the uncle 30 minutes before the wedding starts? I'm guessing you were doing it in the men's changing room, and why wouldn't he be in there 30 minutes before? Like, it's not... the math ain't mathing. Maybe it's those sweet Spanish nothings that I've just said, but my brain is scrambled trying to figure out what in there tarnation is going on. And now, on to the update. Hey guys, I know a lot of people want to know what happened. After talking to Josh yesterday, he asked me to only say that he's okay, figuring things out, and moving on. We're going to stay friends with him and his sister. Dana was told that no one in the group wants to interact with her, and since then, it's mostly radio silence. 
I can't share more about Josh's future plans, as he asked me not to. He did have a good laugh at some of the comments that I showed him, and appreciates the support. The one detail I did get correct on those who were curious about his uncle, he's the younger brother of Josh's mother, and he's 55 years old. I thought he was married into the family, but I got that detail wrong. I also found out the most disgusting detail is the uncle knew Dana since she was a teenager. Dana and Josh are high school sweethearts, so yeah, I kinda feel gross knowing that. Other than that, I got a major haul of cake, so at least I got something good out of this mess. In the comments, a little more information. OP says, A few things I've been asked not to share, but I can share, is Josh is okay and working to get things in order. He came over too, and seemed down, but we got him to laugh a bit, so there's some good news. No news on Dana. I actually requested to change some of my classes with her, or drop if I could find alternative schedule. Not in any hurry, since I'm only a student part-time. Someone asks, 29 and still in college? OP says, first time for Dana, second time for me. A few of the other girls in my friend group are also returning, or starting later in life due to college's cost. What happened to the uncle and his family? OP says, from what I can share, I was asked to keep a lot of details private by Josh himself, his wife, the uncle's wife, is planning a divorce. That's really all he wants me to say. Further in the comments, Wild Butterscotch says, I remember this post. Effing another dude? The groom's uncle, no less, on your wedding day, at the goddamn venue. A whole new level of cheating. And in her wedding dress, too. The Spanish version of the message makes absolute sense. She doesn't say that she had to pay a cancellation fee, she says that the son of a gun cancelled the wedding, and now the bride has to pay for the wedding. She probably has to pay for the resulting bill, since the groom cancelled and he wouldn't pay for it. Oh, that's what it meant. Man, my Spanish was just too good that, of course I knew that's what it meant, yeah. Well, uh, all's well that ends well in that story, hey guys? I mean, getting cheated on, uh, in the wedding dress, 30 minutes before you're about to get married, with your uncle, I don't think it really can get any worse from there, so it's, um, it's only up from here for the groom, and down from here for the bride. That's my personal opinion on this matter. But you know what, thank god they're actually leaving that relationship, because that's an obvious deal breaker. Unlike our next story, which, ah... <sighs> But yeah, all jokes aside, all of this sadness and disgusting action aside, I'm very much rooting for the groom to have a long, happy and healthy life from here. It sucks that people do bad things like this, but that's just life sometimes. Onwards and upwards, my man. Our next post is by user throwrantry9210, titled, After We... Me, 35 female, opened up our relationship, younger men have been throwing themselves at me. My husband, 40 male, is displeased. I am 35 female, husband is 40 male. We agreed to open up our marriage. I am low libido and wasn't very interested in sex and he is high libido. Since we opened up our marriage, mostly younger men have been throwing themselves at me. I have been very picky but there are a lot of them. My partner is a younger man who is unexpectedly attractive to me. He is the physical opposite of my husband. My husband is very displeased. He feels emasculated. I don't want to close my side of the relationship, but I don't want him hounding me for sex. Is there a compromise we can reach? Why does he feel this way when it was his idea and he is also getting action? In the comments, Yellow Beast Jeep says... He doesn't want to open your relationship, he wants to have sex while you don't. And OP says, that's why we opened it. He said he couldn't stand not having his needs met. If he opened things because of your low libido, it could be hitting him hard emotionally. If you were now far more sexually active with others than you were with him. You were not doing anything wrong, but I could definitely see him having anxiety about your romantic and sexual feelings towards him. OP says, I am not far more sexually active with my other partner. I'm happy with once a week, but our styles match up more than mine and my husband. My husband is explorative and likes partners who are ready to go whenever, wherever. He is happy with his partners as far as I know. They have a lot of kinks they're exploring. 
I need non-sexual affection, kissing, foreplay, to be in the mood. I prefer a delicate, more sensual touch. I still find my husband attractive, but I can't get aroused instantly and be ready to go. It's painful, and it feels like a chore half the time. I don't think he finds me that attractive anymore, but that's life. This is literally always what happens. Thanks for saying this. If he had done any research, he would know that this is exactly what happens. Finding a man that wants casual sex is like shooting fish in a barrel. Women who want casual sex can have their pick, and most of them won't need to bother with the constraints and headaches of a married guy. To be fair, there are lots of really shitty dates out there for women, but a lot fewer for men. I've been in a great relationship for 30 years, but before that, every woman that I dated had great qualities that exceeded mine by miles. I have always dated people that are friends first, and sexual partners second. Sometimes not even that. These posts always make me laugh at the man. Unless you're Brad Pitt level good looking, pretty much any woman is going to have more sexual partners available to her. I don't know how these guys forget what dating is like. They get what they deserve though. Why do people think this will ever work? My guess is that he convinced himself that since his wife has a low libido, she probably won't bother to go out and find someone, essentially making the open marriage just open on his side. But the way that things work, even the tiniest whiff of effort on her part, and she's going to have 1,000 guys lined up, while he's going to have to work really hard to find partners who want to have sex with a married man. And that is just how it goes with pretty much all of these stories where the marriage opens up. I can't remember one, but does anyone know if there has been a good ending to stories like this? It always feels like... A zero-sum game, it, like, it, it, it always ends bad. And further from that, did he not think that she would find a partner that suits her needs? He didn't really think further ahead as to how that would emotionally affect him, and how her time would now be split between her husband and a partner that is more compatible with her than her husband. Like you're marrying this person, you have to know exactly what they're like, you've spent so much time with them, you've spent so much time analysing what they're like, of course they're going to get into a situation like this. And then I wonder when it gets into that territory, is it salvageable? Like if your wife has a boyfriend that is in your house and is hanging out and is being really emotionally intimate with her and they have sex every now and then... Like, sure, you're getting your sexual needs met with other people, but I don't know how you would avoid boiling resentment that slowly comes from the inside. That's the obvious, natural response to this, and it would never end well. Like, you're giving your wife what she wants, she's more than happy to do it, but it means jealousy and less time spent being intimate with you, with obvious signs of her attention being split right in front of your face every day. And now, on to the updates. I, 35 female, talked with my husband, 40 male, and we have more clarity on where we stand. To clarify, I am still low libido. I am happy with once a week, or every two weeks. My husband is explorative and likes partners who are ready to go whenever, wherever. He has a lot of kinks that they're exploring. I need non-sexual affection, kissing and foreplay to be in the mood, and I prefer a delicate and more sensual touch. I still find my husband incredibly attractive, but I can't get aroused instantly and be ready to go. It's painful, and it feels like a chore half the time. I know he doesn't find me as attractive. He told me that he needed his needs met and that I couldn't fulfill them. We opened up the relationship. My husband and I had sex once since it began. He had learned things from his partners. We both hated it. I didn't like him yanking my hair hard or wrapping his hand around my throat, let alone the kinkier stuff that he wanted. He hated how frigid I was. My husband needs sex to be affectionate, but we weren't having it, so he told me to go find affection somewhere else. I tried dating apps, but I wasn't interested in hookups. I really wanted affection, romantic, or platonic. Ironically, men my age or older were looking for younger women or hookups. Younger men and women were more likely to want affection. 
I ended up meeting my partner in person through a mutual hobby. I also made some friends through friendship apps. My husband and I can do our own things separately, but my partner needs a lot of time, affection, and attention from me. He gets a bit territorial. I don't think he feels threatened by my husband, but my husband has remarked that my partner is always over. My husband has an apartment for his partners and lets me use the house. Finally, I talked with my husband on why he feels emasculated. He says he is over jealousy about me, but he is jealous about partners. He says that my partner and the men that I attract are far more attractive than I should have been able to get. It made no sense as I have aged and don't look as attractive as I did back when I was 20. Meanwhile, he should be in the peak of his attractiveness. He is very put together, and he expected that, as an attractive older man, with disposable cash, that women would be flocking to him. They do, but he doesn't like them for various reasons. Attractive young women want him to spend a lot of cash. They're not interested in an equal relationship and expect him to spoil them. They are bratty and entitled. Attractive young women who don't want money have mental health issues. Young women in the kink community, or who are poly, were ugly. Would-be mistresses would leave when they found out that he was in an open marriage. I didn't know what to say. I can't help him with his problem. Edit, my husband and I both thought that I would only get men interested in no-string sex or one-night stands, which I would not be interested in, rather than a close, affectionate, and frankly committed relationship that I desired and filtered for. Surprisingly, there were men who wanted the latter. Edit 2, there are a lot of comments saying that my husband has few prospects, or he isn't getting as much action as he thought. That is untrue. He is a very handsome man, and has been with several women since we opened up. A lot of women are attracted to him. He has sex with beautiful women, kinky women, accomplished women. He should be happy. At this point, I think he's just looking for something to be unhappy about. There is no perfect partner that meets his requirements. In the comments, Spider389 says, So basically he wants some beautiful woman in her prime, who has a successful career to have disposable income for, and has great mental health, to settle for being his mistress. Oh yeah, can't forget the fact that he expects her to have sex on his demand, and to be very kinky. It looks like he is very high standards. OP says, also someone who is kinky and sexually open to a lot of things. I told him that he should compromise, but he's unwilling because he's found plenty of women who fulfill some of his expectations, so he thinks he can find someone who will fulfill all of them. I don't think he's looking for a person, just the manifestation of all his desires. Jar Full of Fart says, I said this in the other thread, but start getting your affairs in order for the inevitable divorce. Y'all aren't having sex with each other, and your side dude is always at the house, so already baby-stepping towards that. Might as well rip the band-aid off instead of slowly pulling it on something that has no chance of working. Can we discuss how disrespectful he is to his wife too? Saying she shouldn't be able to get guys that are good-looking? What the fuck? He is so salty. He overestimated his attractiveness. He probably thought for the past few years that attractive, younger women who were just being friendly were flirting with him. It's a tough reality that women with options don't find his looks enough. Opie, I promise that you can find happiness elsewhere. Your husband is a shallow pig that nobody else of quality wants. You are already in demand. The fact that she said that sex with him is painful is very concerning. He literally gives no shits about prepping and making sure the partner is okay with things getting rougher. He needs a sex toy since he doesn't see women as people. Literally this. He wants a partner who is willing to be basically a walking sex toy, and he will settle for nothing less. And he is mad that he can't find what he wants. What an absolutely delusional asshole. Don't forget that she needs to be young and beautiful and kinky and accomplished and independent with no mental health issues and not want all his money. Oh, but also at home, OP needs to be lonely and unhappy on top of everything else, or else finding said woman won't be worth it. OP has already said it. He is just looking to be unhappy now.
Yeah, it's just not looking good, is it? It just seems like this is going to end in divorce. Either way, like, you, you keep it open or you close the marriage. I feel like you've opened that Pandora's box and done damage. This wasn't talked about in length. You guys didn't do therapy for this one. You didn't do any preparation. You just let it all out and now you're reaping what you sowed. You sowed some goddamn toxic chemicals into that soil and then you killed the crop is what you've done. You walked right up to the Monsanto chemical factory and you were like, yeah, a lot of that, thanks. That's exactly what I'm going to sow. I trust Monsanto with my life. Nothing bad will ever happen. But at the end of the day, what do I know? All I know is that aside from one or two topics, I know exactly two things, Jack and shit. And Jack left town. And on that note, OP should probably leave town too, because the town's on fire. Let's just, let's just put it that way. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave you for today. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye